Welcome to Mindful Movement for your elbows, wrists, forearms. Today, we're gonna to talk about um, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, and a few exercises you can do for your hands, or not your hands, but your wrists and your elbows. All you need is like a small dumbbell. I'm just gonna use a water bottle because I don't have like a two pound dumbbell. But I'd say between like one and five pounds is what I would get. Grab your equipment and let's build some forearm stability. Here's my weight for today. So the, a little bit of an anatomy lesson. If you've heard of tennis elbow, this pain on this bone on the outside of your elbow, the lateral epicondyle right there, you have a lot of muscles that attach there. So your wrist extensor. So a lot of times when these get really, really, um, or when you have tennis elbow, these like lock up and get really tight and can get really painful. Uh, you should be able to just kind of feel this extensor mass. So top of your arm, go to the top, and then you can just kind of pick it up and press on it. Might be a little bit tender. So before we work the muscles, you could just kind of go through, massage it. Not overly stretching, but just giving it a little bit of stimulus. So these extensor muscles attach here. Now if we're talking about the inside of your elbow, we call this one golfer's elbow is the medial epicondyle, so this bone right here, gets um, painful where the muscles attach there. So for that, we look for the flexor um, mass, so palm up, arm straight, lock your fingers up your arm until you find some tightness. Um, if you're having trouble finding a muscle, you just, um, I would actually pretend this is like the table and actually flex your wrist and you'll feel some muscles pop out. So flex and that's your flexor mass. And you can also massage that one as well. Once you've massaged whatever muscles are tight on you, those muscles go all the way down. Um, so those wrist extensors, so this is extending your wrist, attached on the outside, the wrist flexors attached on the inside. So we're just gonna, by to strengthen your elbow, we're gonna strengthen your wrist. So you're gonna get your weight. I like to have my arm off of something. We're going to come up and down. So it's just all on the wrist. I'm gonna just angle this down a little bit so you can see. Up and down, that's it. So the thing is, we don't need to force it in those end ranges and it really needs to be controlled. So we can come up and then go down twice as slow, up, down twice as, twice as slow. There might be a little bit of popping. Uh, we just don't wanna force it through a bunch of pain. But um, as you work on this, you should feel these muscles in the top start to fatigue. Nice and slow. And we're doing 12, I think that's about 12. And then you can do the opposite. So then we flip over. For this one, I like to support on my arm. We're gonna flex, and then we're gonna come down twice as slow. Flex, down twice as slow. We're doing 12 of these as well. Not the most exciting exercise in the world, but. Okay, I think we're gonna do um, a hammer. Actually, it works really well for this. I'm just gonna grab on the far end of my water bottle. So we're gonna be here, palm down, and we're going to rotate it palm up. This one too, just really try to control the whole motion. We're not flopping. Your elbow stays pretty supported. Okay. 
you have the water bottle too, the water kind of sloshes around, which gives you a little bit more of an instability component, which requires your muscles to have more stabilization. So yeah, like a hammer, if you hold on to the edge of a hammer, you've got a little bit of weight, which gives you a little resistance if this is too easy for you. Um, also, if you have like a dumbbell, you could, instead of holding in the middle, hold on to the side. That's gonna give you that longer lever to give you a little bit more resistance. So those are a couple of forearm exercises. You know, some other options would be maybe taking some Play-Doh. Sometimes I keep some by the couch and just squeezing it. Um, anything working on like your grip is also going to work on these forearm muscles, which attach to your elbow. Uh, but the other few that I would like to work on would be bicep curls and tricep or like school crushers. If your elbows hyperextend, that's where you want to be really careful. Um, mine personally do not hyperextend. So, um, you know, me demonstrating it may not carry over into, um, you know, what's actually happening for you. So let me get my dumbbells and then we will do bicep curls and then skull crushers. So I actually only have a couple of plates readily available. I'm just gonna let my head be cut off for this so that you can see what's happening, shoulders and elbows and hands. So you're gonna hold ideally a dumbbell. This is just the weight that I'm using. We've got curling up, down, slow. So that's kind of where it's gonna come down to is not letting yourself flop down, up and down, slow. And then your shoulders are kind of staying back gently so that when you come down, we're not getting any shoulders forward. We want shoulders back. So we're curling off of a stable surface and we've just got 10 of these. And then take a break. Our um, animal of the day that's running around during my filming is Augie. He's really active today. He was just climbing all over everything. So you may see him run by. Okay, we can go back. Okay, we've got another 10. back Ellis. <laughs> um, and as far as yeah like the angle we've probably got our palms up and then I found elbows angled out is generally a little bit more comfortable you could come out here or you could come forward a little bit I'd say probably not all the way out here a little bit more forward than out To a break. Oh, you can see Augie over there. And then we've got one more set of those. It's actually really hard holding onto a weight plate because it pulls in more muscles and my forearms are actually kind of tired. Alright. One more set of ten. Even with something as simple as this. Don't hold your breath. Um, upper body exercise can actually change your blood pressure more than lower body. So if you have dysautonomia, it could be why upper body is so much harder for you. All right. For working triceps, I would like to move to your back today. So let's get down on the mat. Continue with light weights, probably three to five pounds for this one. To your back. Oh, 
Okay, so the angle is what really matters for this one. So you've got your arm straight up and your upper arm does not move at all. Your lower, like your wrist, your elbows bend, comes down towards your face, back up straight, not overly extended. What we don't want is this. The upper arm needs to stay still, so I would say press your shoulder blades down just a little bit, and then curl and back up. It's called the skull crusher, but no skull crushing allowed. Do not drop it on your face. So this one, you're probably gonna need to be a little bit lighter than bicep curls until you learn how to do it. I like this variation the best. Um, you will feel it in the back of your upper arm if you're doing it correctly. So we're doing 10 of these as well. And then take a break. Whew. We've got three sets. Uh, the other option, you know, if you're ever doing this workout on your own, you could go back and forth. It's called the super set where you work bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep. So you would do one set of bicep curls, one set of skull crushers, and go back and forth. Um, because you're working the opposite muscle group, um, it still kind of counts um, as far as getting your rest because when you work the opposite muscle group then um the other one is relaxing so we've got 10 more slowly lower slow but not overly slow shoulders kind of down lats engaged to kind of help with the Upper body positioning. Take a break. I am really starting to feel it. And this one really shouldn't strain your neck at all because of the um, neck position. I'm really hoping you can see enough. <clears throat> okay, one more. Let's knock it out. It doesn't really matter what you do with your legs. Uh, I would imagine that knee would probably feel better. And we're breathing. That's it. We got four, no, five exercises you can do for your elbows and your forearms. As usual, rewatch as many times as you need to and continue to practice these exercises. Uh, we want strengthening at least three times a week for, um, you know, full body, but especially if we're trying to rehab a joint and get one joint specifically stronger, then we need that repetition um, for that joint specifically. Thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow.